What's up puppy people? My name is Alexia and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video we are going to be going over what I did with my custom cages hybrid enclosure. More specifically one of the enclosures. I still have three more that I have plans for but today we're going to be going over how I made a bioactive desert enclosure and I am going to um, link all of the products and go through it with you and show you the awesome enclosure which is this one right here behind me and kind of give you an up close view and tour of it so if you're interested please keep watching into today's video as I said this is a bioactive desert enclosure meaning that unlike my other bioactive enclosure videos I have done it does not have any tropical plants or um, substrate that holds a lot of moisture I instead have used desert type or more arid type environment substrates which I will link down below and go through with you um, whenever I get more into it and I did not use any tropical plants in this so if you are looking for a tropical type of um, example of how to do a bioactive enclosure this is not going to be the video for you but if you are looking for a desert type something that would be good for monitors um, certain desert species of monitors obviously um, this can work for leopard geckos this can work for bearded dragons honestly because they don't require high humidity just any of the lower humidity type animals that kind of have a natural desert environment or um, drier environment this will be the right video for you. Getting into the how I did it portion of the video, um, before I put in any substrate, before I did anything like that, I took a clear silicone, 100% silicone that is animal safe, and I put it on the bottom edge and the corners of the glass. So I put it on the bottom where the um, bottom panel and the back wall me and then the glass as well just because the substrate does include a very fine sand and I didn't want any getting through the cracks or anything like that. I also put this piece of wood that you can see here. Um, it is a piece of wood that I covered in Flex Seal and then covered in a 100% animal safe silicone. I just did this so no substrate would get into the um, barrier or into the doors, the sliding doors. They do sell substrate barriers for custom cages. I just forgot to order them, so I made my own. Really simple, really easy. Um, just takes like 24 hours for the silicone and or flex seal to cure. So that's what I did in order to prevent any of the substrate or moisture from the substrate getting into the lower levels of the hood or just getting out of the enclosure in general. After prepping the enclosure with the silicone and the little substrate barrier I made, I ordered all of my substrate and had it shipped. It arrived in two days. I got it from Josh's Frogs. The substrate I used in this enclosure is just one type of substrate. Due to the fact that it was not a tropical bioactive enclosure, I did not include a drainage layer. There was no need for that because there should never be enough moisture in the enclosure to where um, it will just excessively sit in the bottom. Due to the fact it is a desert enclosure, I am not going to be watering it very often and the only water that would really be in there is going to be what is in the bowl for um, the reptile going in here. So as I said, I got a desert uh, substrate and I got it from Josh's Frogs. It shipped really quickly. It ended up um, coming in two different boxes but on the same day. It shipped through FedEx, so I was worried that once again, like with the enclosure, it was going to kind of arrive on two separate days, but thankfully it arrived in one day. I ordered six bags of the Josh's Frog, Josh's Frog's Desert Bioactive um, bedding, and I ordered six bags because I wanted to make it a pretty deep and easily... Um, bur easy to burrow in for the reptile going into this enclosure because they do like to dig and they um, need to be able to burrow like I said so I made it four inches deep in the front and it's a little bit deeper in the back I kind of have it slanted and there's also some places um, as you'll see where I have hides kind of underground for them so they can cool off a little bit more go into that later Anyway, starting with how I prep the substrate, on the bag it tells you that you should mix it with a little bit of water just to kind of moisten it and make it a little more moldable due to the fact that it is kind of meant for burrowing desert species. I added the water um, and I added it one bag at a time just to ensure that there were no extremely dry spots or spots that didn't get mixed or spots that were too wet, things like that. 
I just kind of mixed it with my hand and I was wearing a glove because as I said there is sand in the substrate and I didn't want it making a huge mess. Um, so I used gloves. Uh, my husband didn't use gloves when he helped me with this but I did just because I am not really looking for a bigger mess than what needed to be made. So as you can see, I was scooping out the substrate with a cup and just kind of evenly pouring in the bottom layer. Um, and I did this with the first four bags. I ended up making a nice even bottom layer, stacking it, making it a little taller in the back, things like that, just so I can get the correct depth um, started. Moving on from that, we started putting in all of our plants. As you will notice, all of our plants are different types of succulents. We have an ice plant in there as well, and we also have an aloe vera in the very back. Um, they're all very desert type plants and we expect them to do well in this enclosure due to the fact that it is specifically a desert type substrate and it will do well with um, succulents and things like that. You could order the succulents off of Josh's Frogs. I just chose not to and went and chose to get them from a plant store near us. It was a lot cheaper that way because I didn't have to pay for shipping and also I could ensure that they were safe upon their arrival because I'm the one who went and got them. Anyway, we started putting in all of the um, succulents and removing all of the soil that was on them and moving them over into the substrate we have. Um, as you can see, when we did that, there were some succulents that lost a couple pieces, but it's okay. It still looks fine. Everything turned out great. We also made sure to put one of the hides, we used a cork bark specifically, and we put it underneath the substrate so that it was kind of an underground tunnel already there for the uh, reptile going into the enclosure. And then we placed the basking spot on top of it. Now the basking spot is supposed to be between 120 and 140 degrees for the species that is going in here. So that side of the enclosure is going to be the warm side. We didn't really put any plants over there just because we were not wanting to risk frying them or just we, we did not expect them to do well over there. So the majority of the plants are on the cooler side of the enclosure as is the water bowl. There are two hides on the warm side, the one that goes underground that is directly under the um, basking spot and then there's a tube of wood as you can see you next to it and then we also have one big hide over on the cool side of the enclosure. Even though this species is known to burrow and will probably dig under everything and might even dig up some of the plants, we just wanted it to look presentable and possibly have the ability to give it that naturalistic environment even though it might, like I said, rip up the plants. We don't know what will happen. We just really wanted to give it a as natural of an environment as possible. today's video. I know it wasn't really an educational per se, but I did kind of go through how to do a bioactive enclosure, more of a desert type though. Basically all you have to do is use a desert type bioactive bedding and then you can put obviously the living plants and isopods and things like that into it. Um, it's really simple to do. I really, really love how the enclosure turned out. It went so much better than we had planned in our head and so far we have lost zero plants as I said. Um, it just, it's doing great. I love it. Hopefully the reptile we end up getting for it will love it. And I, ugh, just this enclosure is so wonderful guys. Thank you so much to Custom Cages for not only sponsoring today's video, but for giving such wonderful quality products that I know I can trust and make beautiful, um, beautiful living spaces for reptiles. I am so happy with this enclosure and yeah, once again, thank you to Custom Cages for not only sponsoring this, but giving us products that I truly believe in and think are great for not only my reptiles, but anyone else who purchases from this company. Anyway, as I said, you made it to the end of the video, so please like and give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to stay tuned for our next video. Our next video will not necessarily be um, about the custom cages enclosure, but I just am so obsessed with it that this might be my new background that you guys have to get used to seeing. I don't know. We'll see. 
but stay tuned for next week's video and then we are going to decorate the um, enclosure underneath this one pretty soon here so stay excited for that I'm really ready for not only the new wrapped towers but just I love decorating enclosures so this has been super fun anyway once again for like the third time thank you guys so much for watching I can't wait to see you next time bye